Welcome to you all. Thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to all of you. Brilliant to have you with us. Let's talk about money. Uh, not a subject you might often hear mentioned in church. My first question um, is, when did you first hear the subject of money raised in church? And, and what was your reaction to that? Uh, Jeff and Suzanne, tell us about that. Yeah, well, you probably heard about it before me. Cause... Yeah, so I grew up in church, um, so from a very young age. It actually wasn't talked about very much in church, but um, my my parents were obviously very involved in the church and always tithed and gave money to the church. So it was just something that I grew up knowing and just feeling it was something that God wanted us to do. I never questioned it, really. Probably quite different for you. Yeah, so we, we met in our sort of 20s and I wasn't a Christian. Um, I was believed in creation and the being a God, but I hadn't really studied the Bible and met Suzanne. She started taking me to church. And I think, yeah, before I even became a Christian, I heard preachers on money. Oh, early on. Yeah, so very early on, yeah. very early days. And what was your reaction? Um, I think I, yeah, I, I, I didn't like it, I think. And it made me more reserved and uh, restant and reluctant to settle in any particular church feel like you're making a commitment and that was the time to give to give money so I was I was uncomfortable with it in mm. the early stages very very helpful thank you and uh, CJ and Benini you your experience of hearing money mentioned in church was different between the two of you as well wasn't it it was um, slightly different um, actually similar to Susan we both grew up in a, in a church and money you give you do offerings but um Obviously, our view of given was very different to what it is now. Because at the time, you know, you would look for the, you know, smallest note in your purse. Because that's what my parents <laughs> did. <laughs> or coin. Yeah. You, know? you know, so you, you know, when it's given time, you just, you know, kind of rub it through your whatever your handbag, whatever, and get what is in there and yeah. throw into the um, into the um, the the tray or whatever so yeah it was that up until towards the end of my um university years i am um, i met a friend who went to a different church where tithing was a big thing and tithing she, being uh we'll hear a bit more the, about that in another conversation yes. but it's a giving a 10 percent it was more of income. giving of 10 percent yeah and she was set in those and you know she had all these strong beliefs around it and how is really um kind of God, things, what God wants us to do with money, etc. And again, similar to Jeff, I wasn't quite sure if I was ready for that at <laughs> yeah. the time. Yeah, Being yeah. a student, you know, you keep, you don't just give away that way. But um, yeah, she managed to convince me along the line, and I started to do a bit of that myself and started to see the benefit, if you like. It opened up a whole journey around money between me and God, really. Yeah. And I kind of brought that into our marriage. So when I met CJ again, he has similar background as myself uh, in terms of church, and he would give our friends the way I would have done it. And then I talked about tithing, and again he was like, you know, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So that was our journey, so, basically. So CJ, yeah. CJ, you do you resonate with something that, that of Jeff's story there? Yeah, um, I, I, you, my dad was generous even more than I could give to the church. He gave more than that to people. So giving to church was little. You just take coins and give. So we are not even taught about generous giving in the church. So when we got married, he mentioned about us giving huge percentage of our money because I see that as huge. Yes. <laughs> 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 you know, and um, I, I haven't got a good job, so I, we are earning less and we have a little baby. So, but... You have to obey your wife because it, 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 she knows that we are suffering. If she said that we should give, there is a reason for her to say it. So I, I obeyed that and we started tithing. So that is how I got into giving to the church. That was your first experience. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very good. We'll come into I'd like to hear a little bit more about that <laughs> later on, if we may. Uh, and Mike and Jackie, when did you first hear money mentioned in a church setting? Uh, well, I first came to Bracknell Baptist Church, as it was nearly 40 years ago. Wow. I know. I don't look that old. <laughs> uh, I came as a fairly new Christian and was quite receptive and lapping things up. Uh, our senior pastor in those days, Ben Davis, was very big on talking on money. 
and through many preaches I just thought that's normal. So started tithing and offering. Uh, do you want to say your bit? Yeah, I think, you know, in most churches you have a plate or a bag or something that goes around as part of the service, but it's not always spoken about, it's just a part of the service. But when you come to a church, so I came here in 1985 as a trainee teacher, and it was very uh, overt uh, speaking about money, because at that time we were seriously thinking about getting um, a place to building the building we're sitting in now, the Keris Centre, um, meeting as a church in a school. And so then it became actually giving for a purpose, for uh, something for our community. And that in itself, that very journey took you beyond your own personal finances. But certainly it was a big step up. I think I did hear about tithing and that's something I would have done. But in those days, as a student, my income was very small. I know it's proportional, but through the years, yes, our journey in giving has developed. Mm. Mm. Very good. And so, so that was your interaction with church and hearing about money. Uh, where does Jesus come into that? So w- when did you feel like, oh, Jesus and what he has to say, he has something to say about money. This is actually not just about belonging to a church, but this is about following him and being a disciple of, of his. Um, I wonder whether we could just explore that a little bit. Um, CJ, when did that happen for you? Um, it's basically when we, immediately after we started tithing and so many things started happening to me in terms of where we're giving to the church, they, they, our life started changing. So we started watching some of the things on the TV to see what is about money. I started reading the Bible. So at some point, I realized that we are more stable when we are not, when we are tithing than when we are not tithing. So to the point that even the church, we are giving money. After four months, we didn't know that they, that they are keeping our money aside because they know how, how much we have in terms of the living standard. They call us one day, they give us an envelope. We ask them what is on the envelope. They said, this is all the tithing you have done for the fourth month because we saw that you don't have little. Why are you giving to the church? We said, no, this is an, uh, an arrangement between us and God. We are not taking it back. So they, mm-hmm. because of that, they took the money back because we, we are not giving to the church, we are giving to God. So why do you keep the money? So that experience has, has a lot of miracles that's happened in our marriage because we decided to give God first. So that experience is what has made us. Yeah. So you yeah. really see this as integral to your faith, yeah. Not, yeah. not membership of a church. Yeah, definitely. That's really, no, 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 no. really, really yeah. helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jeff, would you resonate with any of that? You were saying you were struggling early on to get to grips with it, it felt like a, a like something, that, a duty that you had to yeah. do to the church. Yeah. But how did that switch from that to being, oh no, this is actually part of following Jesus for me? Yeah, so, so I think following Jesus was an easier step for me to take than, than the one of, of giving my money, what I saw as my money at the time. Um, so that was the easier step. And slowly but surely knew that we were going to probably start a family soon and wanted to commit to a church and knew that that would pr- probably involve making some commitment financially. Um, and I, Simon Benham, our senior pastor, w- preached once about when he became a Christian, I think at the age of 18, and having this picture of a corridor with lots of doors off those co- corridors mm. of different areas of your life that God wants to break in and change in you. And that probably none of us are equipped to handle all of those areas of our lives that needed changing but but the first door that was revealed to me was money and it was yeah it was pretty early on in my walk uh, of faith Um, and yeah it was a time when um, I was looking to resign from a company I'd worked at for seven years we were just looking to set up a business um, and the business plan had a my salary would be halving from what I'd been used to um, but we're fortunate Suzanne had a good job as well. Um, we made that decision. We started giving uh, together as a couple. We went on that journey together. Um, and you became pregnant. Yeah. Um, very quickly afterwards. Very quickly <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and we're thinking, this wasn't, this wasn't, yeah. So we went from making that commitment 
to hitting some real challenges financially. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I know these things are relative. We always had food and we had heating, but financially our situation changed quite dramatically, and that was just shortly after we started giving regularly to the church. So that was so our that early experience. Yes, yeah, Suzanne, yeah. was there ever a time you, where you, where that childhood experience of this is what you do got yeah. really tested and you think we must be um, bad? I think we definitely went on that journey together we did. so although I'd grown up with just knowing and not really questioning it at all I think it was probably good that I met Jeff who didn't have any understanding of what why would you do that um so we we, we went on that journey together you know read the bible verses looked at what Jesus was saying so that you know we could we could make that decision as a, as a couple which I think was really key for us to do so when it got to that point where we were challenged I think we'd done the kind of work in understanding and accepting and committing that this was something that God was asking us to do yeah. and we were willing to do that. It wasn't like he was, you know, well, yeah. dragging it out of us. Mm. We wanted to do it. Yeah, we got to um, that point. Yeah, so I think that was a journey that we went, that we went on together. But yeah, it wasn't easy, obviously, at that yeah. point because I do think when you make a commitment like that, I think the devil then challenges you with, yeah. well, here we are, you think you're ready to tithe, do you? There we are. Now I've halved your money. Have some of this. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Are Have you going to change your mind? So I think there was a, you know, there was a little bit of wrestling with that. Actually, mm. can we afford it now? Mm. Maybe, yeah. maybe we can't anymore. Um, but we personally, what I felt once we, that decision was made, it was like a burden released, and wow. and, and such uh, a blessing. Yeah, we went through harder times financially, but I think it really built our character. You mm. know, we budgeted. We got rid of one vehicle. We downgraded another vehicle. You know, we made some decisions. It were, were, were a tough few years for us, but it really shaped us as a couple, managing our money. Um, a big, yeah, a real blessing. What I love is that it was all based, what you said there about it being based on um, faith in what God had, was talking to you about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that he changed your will on the inside to, to want to, to do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It was like it was being, it being dragged down. Mm -hmm. um, Mike, you were uh, in the police mm -hmm. many years ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, there was a stage when you were pinched as a family, uh, and Jackie as well, and you had three girls, which is, all the best families have three girls. <laughs> you can cut that bit out, that's, <laughs> that's a bias. <laughs> But tell us about that stage of life when things were at their tightest for you and, um, and you were raising a family and trying to make mortgage payments and all of that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Well, yes, in our early married life, as you say, we, we got married, started a family fairly quickly, uh, bought our first house. Very shortly after that, interest rates went up to 15%. Uh, oh, gosh. And actually, from the time we were married, we decided together that we would be tithing. We would be uh, honouring God uh, and being obedient. Uh, and we followed that through. But actually, when you give, you put yourself in a position to receive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we were definitely in a position to receive. And we received many uh, gifts. Uh, we were subsidised going on holiday with other people. Uh, and, but God was faithful. Uh, it's been said you can't outgive God. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, yes, we, there were many months when sort of we were wondering where the, uh, the, the, there was too much month left at the end of the money, I think the uh, expression is, isn't so, it? So, yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, so you, you were definitely on paper thinking, how are we going to make it to the end of the month? Regularly, regularly. I used to but, have a special um, bank account for food. Uh, and the days when he had checkbooks and I literally at the beginning of the month I would put how much money I had and then I'd cross it off and I remember near the end of the month getting to the till and going I think I need to put a few things back because we budgeted so carefully um, and yeah we, we just it, it just put us in a position of need and both of us came from quite middle class families right. where you never talked about money, you didn't particularly have any needs, you know, as children but suddenly, you know, we were praying all the time for things so with Mike um, working full shifts, I, I didn't work in those days it, women didn't get the kind of support for childcare or for working it was much more difficult to do it and with a shift worker, virtually impossible so we were down to one salary 
Um, and yeah, it just meant that we would constantly be praying and asking God to provide for us in all sorts of miraculous ways. And so quite often Mike would get overtime or certain payments and we would see that as God's blessing. Yes. And then also we had gifts in kind. I remember having a hairdresser whose mother gave her masses and masses of clothes that she didn't like and they were all designer dresses and things. So my children were the best dressed kids in the world. <laughs> and we received it joyfully and she loved giving to us because she knew that we would really enjoy the clothes and she'd love seeing our girls in them and things. So, yeah, and it just gave you that, that willingness, really, to realise you can be in a circular economy, mm. that, you know, somebody else's excess provides for you and then you pass on and this mm. sort of thing. So I think it broke sort of pride, yeah. you know, and I, I think we picked it up a bit with our parents being really like, do we even tell them what we're doing, you know, because it wouldn't have been within their experience. But we found too within just being able to share a need and pray about needs with others, we became more and more open. And that, that is really liberating, actually, really liberating, because God, you, you see it as being God's blessing. And you realise people love to give. So you're giving them an opportunity to, to support you. Mm, that's very yeah. good. Mm. Yeah. That's true. I'm loving hearing these stories of uh, what it was like for you and what you learned uh, when you were in need. Yeah. And the lessons that you learned then sound to me like they've set you up uh, for uh, times when you've had more than enough. Um, and you have similar questions, but you're still carrying what you learned about trusting God in that season into other seasons. Mm. Benina, I, I wonder whether any of that is resonating with you. And have you known times both when you've been in need and other times when you think, I've actually got more than enough. Oh, come on, Ben. I'm from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, certainly. I mean, we grew up in, not, not poverty for say, but um, there's not always been excess. You know, I grew up in Africa, so does CJ. So we were taught from earlier on about keeping money. You keep what you get. You don't give it away. It's not... Only because it's, it's not enough to go around. It's like a scarcity. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. the scarcity of things and, you know, you, you stretch money as long as they can go, really. Mm. And um, so giving is a real step of faith for us. Wow. It's been a big, you know, of course, there are times when those were tested and I'll let CJ talk about that. In our marriage, obviously, I came in saying we have to toy, etc. And CJ came on board with that and he touched on that briefly earlier about it was almost like he did it because I said it. But again, that got tested and then we had to actually individually work out why we do this. And um, yeah, but for us, it was um, really keeping what you have, not giving it away, like I said. And if you were to give away, you give the smallest amount, not in the faithful way that we know it now, where the Lord wants your best, mm -hmm. not your least, if, if that makes sense. So that has, in time, got us to a place where I would say, I think the, word, the only word I can think of is where um, the Lord has gently and kindly broken the hold that money has on us. Mm. Mm. So we weren't particularly rich, but, you know, like, um, you, you know, you don't have to be rich to be mm. really a holder or something, or not give, mm. but we weren't particularly rich. And I think that made us, you know, hold on to what we have more rather mm. than give it away. But, the, you know, the Lord has graciously worked us through a place where we can actually trust him to be faithful, to provide and by giving away and watching him do these amazing things in our lives and meet us, you know, at every stages, areas of our lives. Similar to what Jackie was sharing. I mean, currently now we have four children and, yeah, <laughs> the demands are high. Yeah, so don't want. yeah. So I there. leave you to you know, make that judgment. But yeah, but again, you know, we're not sat here in, in you know, kind of in a place where you know we have got it all together. But at the same time, we're not at all anxious about the their needs being met because that's where the Lord has got us. You know, mm. to a place where we can fully trust Him. Wow. with these things and yeah and I think it's a good place to be in and I think it's something for everyone really to kind of step out and try him on like he said mm. yeah because he will bring you to that place mm. 
like he has done for most of us that are on this table really. So in terms of the challenge we had come you know, tied in, obviously, like I said, we started it off with, oh, what a good idea. I think she just said, joined me on it, but that got tested further down the line. There were needs and pressing needs. And then, shall I um, So after, because when you have one kid, it's easy, but when we have two <laughs> kids, and when they were little, you give them what you want to give them, but when they are growing up, they tell you what they need. They want to. And that's just get over, because we started, we continue to give, and when we move into Brackner here, we, with the first time I had um, that you cannot uh, give, uh, give God, I never had that such times before. Um, for me, I was struggling because I was looking at I was at giving God because <laughs> the the amount of money I'm giving, I have needs, but my wife wants us to consistently give. So one day I just said to my wife, can we talk about this? Because I know I have read the Bible and in Bible they say that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Um, but I'm giving, I'm not seeing the blessing. Mm, so yeah. I just want to see the fruitfulness of what I'm doing. You know, we, we have to be honest with ourselves. God is a generous giver. He wants to bless us because he said it in Hebrews 11 verse um, says that whoever that comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when I was discussing it with her, initially it depends on her revelation about giving to give, but when things get tight, I need to get my own liberation. I hear like that that is what God is drawing me into. Mm -hmm. So she said to me, go and search the scripture for yourself and find out if giving is the right thing or not. I'm not the one to tell you not to give. But for me, I have made up my mind. So this drives me insane because <laughs> she, she knows there is need and she's telling me go and find out. And also, it makes me jealous because in the same Bible she's reading, I'm reading, she saw something I haven't seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's, I'm just asking myself, what am I, am I not reading the Bible she's reading? What am I so I now said, I have to find out because God is not a respecter of anyone. If she gave my wife the grace of giving, she wouldn't leave me alone because these two shall become one. So we don't want to, we have been together in everything. We don't want to split in terms of giving. Yeah. So that led me to start studying different scripture. The more I studied, I realized that even tithing is not an option. You have to be generous. You have to even give abundantly beyond. And when I begin to see different scriptures that is littered all over the scriptures, that even those that gives, they have more abundance. And God began to soften my heart. Because before, I was giving grudgingly. Yeah. I was giving out of necessity. I wasn't even giving out of love. And that is why things are not flowing back to me. Mm -hmm. But God wants to break that heart. And even the whole money has over me. Mm -hmm. So studying the scripture opens so much door for me. Not just about generosity, but about the goodness of God in its entirety. And that is what... Yeah. A lot of testimony that we started seeing then, it's not because God hasn't blessed us, it's because I was so... <laughs> Closed up to it. I, I, yeah. think, I think, yeah, I think, just adding to that, I think also when we got to that point, like I, I said, I was so convinced about this. And I, to be honest, I didn't know why, but I've seen the love of God over me even before my marriage, and I've seen it through our relationship up until that point that, you know, I just couldn't stop it. I had all the reasons to stop it. It was right in front of me. For goodness sake, I was the mom of the kids. So I, I, I should be telling CJ, that's it now. But mm -hmm. no, I was the one. So I, I can't sit here now and say I knew why, other than what I saw God doing in my life, I think. And at that point, when he said, we have to stop this, Toyed, you know, given in the way we were doing, rather, even if we were, we could do it as a when, rather than as a, um, as a regular. Yeah, regular. Reg consistently. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember saying to him, looking at our knees, I can guarantee you now that every month there will be more and we will end up not doing it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, and I decided and I said to him, you know what? 
how about I carry on doing it? You go and sort yourself out. <laughs> 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 um, don't give until you're ready, because we're not getting the benefit of it if we carry on giving the way we're doing. It, it's yeah. really pointless. I said, you know, how about I carry on doing it for now? I've tied out of whatever I earn, you know. It wasn't much at the time, but I'll do it. And then when you're ready, when you feel the Lord is leading you to do it properly, then like he said, we were kind of giving grudgingly. We, we, you know, it was more dutiful rather than out of um, appreciation. I, I like the way CJ you almost took that as a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not having you, you know, like <laughs> yeah, ahead exactly. of me on this thing. I need to get to the bottom of this myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to hear about. Um, we've talked about times and decisions and lessons and the faithfulness of God proved in times of need. I'd love to hear about. What does it look like when um, he, you go through a season when he's supplying more than you need um, and you still exercise faith over, well, what do I do with this? And mm-hmm. there are other lessons to learn in those seasons. Um, I wonder whether, um, Jackie, whether you'd speak to that. Yes, I returned to work um, after my children were sort of the youngest was just starting school and uh, I was a teacher um, got back into teaching and uh, different opportunities, working part time, and then I had an opportunity to get a secondment with the government, doing some work on disability. Um, and during this t- time, I, you know, I wasn't really particularly career-minded. I would have to say I was really thinking about the family. Mike was a shift worker, but um, I went up to London to a conference, um, and a woman, I, I had written a book, and um, this lady was a traveller, she was from Canada, and I thought, oh, maybe she want to read my book on the plane. So I gave her my book, she sort of read the back cover and grabbed me and said, um, God wants to give you money, more money than you made. I was in the Unification Church, which is a cult, and I was just making about $1,000 a day, uh, fundraising and just selling stuff. And um, she gave me this prophetic word. Now, he's a teacher. I'm a part-time uh, a, a policeman teacher. You know, you look at us and we're not ever going to be earning large sums of money, really. But um, with prophecies, I think God sort of, he doesn't give it to you to, you know, push you. But I did regularly pray about that. And I had an expectation and I realized I didn't particularly have an ambition but we'd always felt that God has gifted us the gift of giving, but we didn't particularly have a lot of funds to give. Yeah. So um, as it came about, this secondment uh, ended and um, the two other people I was working with, we set up a business. And uh, then within about three years, we had a major contracts with every education department in Australia. And so, uh, and I remember too, with this prophecy, it gave me the confidence to keep saying to my colleagues, I think I need a pay rise. And um, it just, I think it was just so exciting for me. I felt like I was given permission to earn money. And uh, John Wesley um, famously said, you know, earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. And that became really, I could see this as an open door for me to earn sufficiently, you know, huge sums of money compared with a teacher's salary. But it was exciting because also of everything that was going on in terms of our development as a church and just our general experience of of giving was that we learnt in the hard ways about giving. And then as your your money increases, you you have to work quite hard to give it away, actually. Mm -hmm. And and we did invest as well. We got some very sound advice. Um, Even in the very early days, um, there was a guy called Malcolm McGregor who came uh, to church from America, who's a, and he he actually worked out the figures that got Mike very excited about compound interest for mortgages. (laughs) And how if you pay off that um, in advance, you can effectively half the life of your mortgage. And his whole thing was, you know, let no debt, uh, have no debt apart from the debt to love. Mm. So, you know, in these days of very high interest rates and this sort of thing, we had this as a real passion that we would live debt free, we'd live simply, but we would look for opportunities to earn as much as we could. And God just blessed me and enabled me to be positioned to run a company. And I did that for about, yeah, 
over 10 years. And to give. Mm. And to give, yes. <laughs> I have to enjoy the joy of giving on a, yeah. on a larger mm. scale, yeah. Um, Suzanne, I w wonder if I could ask you what, what that um, has been like, uh, remembering those days when there was real need and it was a really hard time mm. and a challenge to your faith to go through with. Uh, and you've known times when the season's been, oh, I've actually got more than enough to, to live on. What's that been like, having that um, God-given ability to give? And, and how has it, you know, what's changed as a result? Yeah, of that? I think, um, well, firstly, God has blessed us abundantly. And, you know, that's, it didn't happen overnight. It happened over a, a period of time. Um, the business has done well. And we have... Been, I guess really listen to God on what to do with our money and how to be good stewards of it which is a Christian term but um, just that we are responsible that God's given it to us blessed us with it and it's our responsibility to do good things with it and to be wise with it and to yeah just take good advice and use it well and I guess um, that's something that we've been really passionate about yeah. doing you know, ever since we had any money, I guess, it's just really important to us that we we see it as God's money. Yeah. Um, it's not our money. We, we try to hold it really lightly. Yeah. And I think that's just, it's a blessing. It's not mine. It's not anything I've done to deserve it. Um, God has blessed us and that we therefore have to be good stewards and be using it well and using it wisely and giving to others and looking for opportunities to be able to give. Right. And I think, yeah. as, as Jackie said, like being able to give is a massive privilege. It is. Yeah. Like yeah. You get such a blessing from being able to give what you have, um, e e whether it's a small amount or a big amount, or, mm. or sharing what you have, sharing your home with others, or um, sharing some of the, the good things that we have with other people. It's a massive blessing, and I see mm. that as a huge privilege. It's not. Yeah. It's not mm. something I have to do. Mm. It's a real joy. That's mm. so good. That's so good. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to someone? <clears throat> let's say a, a young adult who's perhaps just starting out um, with a job, and they're looking at the cost of housing in the area and thinking, "I'm never going to get there," and they're asking these kinds of questions. Um, you know, we may not have 15% interest rates, but perhaps house price relatively mm -hmm. are more expensive than they were. Um, well, but what would your, be your exhortation or your encouragement to them? Jeff, I wonder if, you wouldn't, if you'd go first on this one. Yeah, I think uh, it, it, it's challenging and it's, you know, especially now we've been blessed in so many ways and it's a long time looking back when we were, were stretched. Um, but, you know, I remember that feeling of letting go and, you know, as Suzanne was saying, it's not our money. And holding that lightly, that feeling of when you let go and say, God, I trust you with this, the impact that that has in your life and how things change in your life. So I would encourage anybody is to, is, you know, really, really pray about it. But think about putting that first. You know, so you know when you when you look at budgets and how do you get by each month? You know, you start with your mortgage or your rent payments or whatever it might be. Is is, is look at the giving first. Mm -hmm. Do that first, mm -hmm. and other, everything else will follow. That's right. Wow. Well, yeah. That's right. Mike, you you've got uh, young adults uh, as daughters now. What are you telling them in, to do? What's in, your advice indeed. to them? Well, fortunately, uh, all three of my girls have uh, been brought up in uh, in the Christian way, and they're all going on with God. So they they've they've been pretty well drilled. Uh, <laughs> I would say, yeah, as, as Jeff said, uh, God's given us a brain. We need to budget, we need to plan, but we need to trust. Yeah, uh, trust. There's a yeah. passage in Malachi, uh, I think it's the only uh, place in the Bible where God says, test me in this. Mm. And that's referring to, uh, to money. It's yeah. the one time that we are able to test God. Uh, so I would say, yes, budget, plan, but trust God. Uh, do make your offerings, make your tithes, put yourself in a position where uh, where you can uh, you can receive back from him. It's been lovely to to see our children doing this themselves. You know, um, we just heard recently that um, one couple are going to give some money to another couple who are just desperate to be able to get a house, and um, you know they're passing money on, and where they've said, "Oh, we've prayed about this, and God has." supplied and I think that's one of the things too is it, it becomes a source of prayer that you can pray together and you can ask 
You know, you mm. can ask God for miracles. I mean, mm. years ago, um, we used to pray for money in the post, for tax rebates. You know, the joy of when you see that uh, car insurance come in and it's gone down. You know, you mm. celebrate it because mm-hmm. you know God's, God's awesome. in that mm. and you can enjoy it, you know. Mm. And uh, we always used to also pray for legacies. And then you scan your family and go, "Mm, no, (laughs) nobody there. But we have an answer to prayer for that. Prayed many, many times that God would, you know, give us money. And I had, my father had a cousin who he'd lost touch with. The cousin um, was married. His wife died before him. He had no children. And he basically phoned up one day and said, I'd like to leave my house to you in my will (laughs) and I was like it was me and my brothers and I immediately remembered we were praying for legacies Mm. you know and it was like well he was a train enthusiast did I want him to give that money to a train society no God had it in mind to give to us that (laughs) we could then enjoy and pass on to other people yeah Mm. so it's just having that confidence that God will supply through yes through your own efforts but Mm. also through in really exciting things and i love telling that story Mm. because i literally have no hands on it whatsoever apart from receiving it and just going this is just so amazing Mm. that somebody i i just hardly knew i think i met him once well Well. we'll we'll all receive that won't we yeah Yeah. (laughs) thank you Um, i see to and vinnie and i know when we were um talking before you were you were saying about times where you how do you respond to uh, a prod from the Holy Spirit to give? And you may or may not have money at the time in order to do that. Mm. Um, tell us a little bit about how, how you approach those situations now. Um, this started after, when I started um, studying the word to find out what really God wants us to do with money. And he began to reveal quite a lot of things to me. So there was a time we were having a gift aid and we have already given our tithe. So we are saving money to buy a house. So I just felt in my spirit that God wants us to give what we are already saved, part of what we have saved to buy a house. And I just asked my wife, because we are upstairs here, and she just immediately come on board with me. It's easy for her. And she said, (laughs) definitely what we already have will not be enough for our deposit. Anyway. Anyway, so let us give it to the house building in Carrot. Let God take care of the rest. So we just gave. We did it. We haven't given that amount before. It's just a step of faith. But I don't know what take over me because when you start the word of God, the word will take over you, mm-hmm. and you do things that you don't know that you normally do. So we just did that anywhere, and for God will have it. For six months after that, most of the mortgage they say, "Oh, we can't rent you that. We can't give you because you're first time buyers. All these things." But we knew God spoke to us, so we are not worried about that. Mm-hmm. And she is pregnant for her for, for the third baby, so he's gonna. We we expecting a baby. So, but when the time comes, when we finally find the house we want, and we made an offer, they accepted it, and the offer is even more than what we are budgeting. So we haven't even got agreement in principle when we made an offer. So, so the mortgage lend um, uh, agent asks us, uh, "Do you have an agreement in principle?" He said, "No." So it's okay. Can you use our mortgage? Uh, advice I said okay we can use them so we went to them they have an office in Brackner so we went to the office so he, she, he, she checked our finance and everything said don't worry you're qualified we have we can get you a mortgage and we look at both of us <laughs> and said really he, he, she, she, she just sent our application after one week he comes back mortgage approved okay. and I think it was all, you know, there were also other things that happened around mm. that, if mm. I, you know, mm. it was um, the house being reduced in price as well. Mm. It was all these other mo- uh, lenders turning us down and suddenly this big, massive bank that we never considered. I'm like, oh yeah, that, yeah, you're fine, you know, you, we don't even need your excesses, mm. your bonuses or that, just your basic is actually fine. Mm. And they were offering to give us more than we wanted. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> can we pay this back first? <laughs> you know? You know? So it was all these miracles around there, you wow. know, that kind of made it obvious that, you know, just mm. getting on board and building the Lord's house. I can't remember what project it was. It must have been this reception, actually, mm. that mm. we were raising mm. funds. But mm. it was one of the gifts. And as CJ mm. said, 
you know, it was our biggest giving ever. We've never gone that far, mm. <laughs> you know. But you know, we did because we felt it was what the Holy Spirit wanted us to do, mm. and we said yes to that. And in turn, He built our own house, you know, almost. Yeah. You know, He led us to something mm. that we could not ordinarily have afforded for, ourselves. Yeah. No. You know, and even when we move into the house, when we are buying the house, the person that was renting the house and is furnished. So all the property he has, he doesn't know where to send. He said, okay, can you buy it from us? Because we don't have any property we and are we renting. we bought them like half the amount. Half yeah. the amount. He Almost. said, whatever you want to pay, just give us. Yeah. And we were looking at him and said, what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is living in a house you haven't built. <laughs> So yeah, it was all it was all the blessings around that, yeah, and which clearly similar to what Jackie was saying, it just links. You know that these are yeah. answered to prayers. Yes, you yeah. prayed for it, the answers it's came. Gone. And yeah. I think there was more, even more, one more specific one as well. Yeah. When obviously moving now and mm. doubling and and it, expenses, isn't yeah. it? bills, and I was mm. going on maternity leave, etc. And mm. then CJ came to me saying. Actually, I think I want to up to my tithing because I want salary increase and I want to tie it into what I want to earn. He wants, sorry, let, so he wants to pay 10% of what you'd like to earn. Yeah. That's exactly Not right. there yet. Wow. Hey, yeah. that is a new wow. pay <laughs> increase strategy. I, I, okay. I, I, <laughs> and, you know, again, looking at our situation at the time, I was like, okay. And all along, I've been ahead in this, I remember. But, you know, again, we prayed about it. And I said, okay, that's fine. If that's what you're feeling led to do, I'm not going to get in your way. And and he did. And as God may have it, yeah. a few months yeah, afterwards. Yeah, a few months after that, that was I, I was in office. My manager called me, said, can I have a discussion? He said, yes. We came to them. We said, um, you have been here for three years. There is no career path for you. But we will create one because we want to increase your salary. And he said, how much do you want us to pay you? I just look at him. <laughs> I didn't understand. He said, do you ask me how much I want, you want us to pay? He said, I have to go home and speak to my wife first. <laughs> so he said, he said, okay, go and speak to your wife. So when I came back, I asked my wife, do you hear what I, my manager told me today? She said, yeah, you have already tied, you already paid you, your time yeah. based on that. So just tell him what you have discussed with the Lord that you want to earn. I said, wow, I don't know how to tell because the amount I, I have in mind is more than what my manager is, will be earning. So I don't have the confidence. To, but I said, I won't obey, I disobey the law. What I will do is to send him an email, what I want. You know, at least it's written down. It's left to him to reject it because I didn't ask for him for any job promotion or anything. He just came to me. So forgot yeah. to have it. I just sent him. Within one month, we have a new job with the same salary that I yeah, want. It was almost wow. exact. Yeah. That was what happened. Yeah. What, what, what he tied it into. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, he came back. Yeah, he was right. He just, he couldn't mm. say it. I was like, why didn't you tell him? He's like, how can I tell him that? You know, mm. I said, well, just email him then. Then you don't have to say it. Because if you go in tomorrow, you have to look him in the eye to tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> but so, he, and he did. And, you know, God just turned up, you know. Mm. And mm. again, just feeding into what you were saying earlier about if you're setting out to, you know, if young adults starting off and wondering where you are at or this or what to do with all of this information, etc. Mm. You know, mm. it, it just, I mean, these are just lives of people where God has shown himself yeah. faithful. Mm. That's what all this is all about. Mm. And m my, my encouragement would be, I mean, he says, only those things we have put in his hand will he keep. That's what the scripture says. And it says, all that we have given him, he is able to keep. Yeah. And give him your finance, you know, as obviously as well as other things, but give him your money. Because that's always where we are holding back yeah. a bit. Mm -hmm. And give it to him and see what he will do. I mean, it's been a, a roller coaster journey for us, and it, but it's been very exciting. We love it. <laughs> we, we want more of those because God yeah, is amazing. Yeah. If you want a boring life, following mm. Jesus, don't tithe, don't yeah. give yeah, money, exactly. that, no. don't exactly. respond no, no, no. to promptings of that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. But if you want an exciting life, if you want an exciting life, life, life you know, I mean, to prayer. you yeah. wait for the post to come because things will be happening, you know, mm. bills mm. will get paid. God, God will just do amazing stuff mm. if you trust him. With yeah. him. Mm. And hearing your stories, whether that's times of high interest rates, times of mm. low interest rates, right now we're facing a, a huge cost of living squeeze. Yeah. Um, but your stories are saying, even then, 
or maybe not even then, maybe because of then, yeah. uh, even more so, mm. then make these decisions to put God first in, in money and, and follow his promptings as he's mm. speaking to you. Mm. Because it's a matter of trust. Yeah. 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 Trusting him and, and him trusting mm. us mm. with what he gives us. So. Mm. Mm. It's just been so inspiring to hear your stories, everybody. We mm. could um, stay here for a lot longer, I'm sure, but uh, yeah. you may well need to get home. Mm. Uh, it's just been brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. and. Uh, God bless you as you continue to walk with him in obedience and faith for money. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.